I used to drive for Uber to make extra cash when I was 19. It wasn't a great gig, but I liked working my own hours and not having a boss. It was an average Friday night, busy for the first few hours with a slight drop off around 9 and then another uptick in activity as people slowly left the bars between 11 and 2 a.m. It was probably about 12.30. I'd done a ride that brought me way out in the boonies, so I was trying to get back into the city when a ping went off on my phone. It was another potential passenger about two miles out of my way, and I was hoping it would wind up taking me to where I needed to go, so I took the job and began over. The music was off and the dark road ahead made me surprisingly tired to the point that I considered cancelling the ride and going home, but against my better judgement I carried on for a few more bucks. The passenger was named Mike, and looked to be about 50 under the street lamp where he stood. He was a lanky man, he looked like a smoker and he smelled like it too. He had a dusty brown jacket that reeked of cigarettes and really clogged up my nostrils from the moment he got in the car. He directed me to the area of town right by the university, which is a bit odd as most of the houses on the block were sororities and frat houses, but I didn't question it too much. I tried to make some light conversation which he would respond to with short enough replies that I got the hint. I was fine with silence. It was a long day and I was exhausted. However, there was something about this guy that gave me the creeps, and sitting in darkness without a word only exacerbated the feeling. We were getting closer to the campus when I looked into the rearview mirror and saw he was staring at me. Now usually when someone is caught staring, they instantly look away, but this guy didn't even blink. I got my eyes back on the road, but after another minute I had to check again, and sure enough, he was still staring right at me. I could hardly see him back there in the shadows, as there was barely any streetlights in the area, but I could see his eyes in the mirror, and there was no doubt where he was looking. I didn't like it one bit, so I opted to force him into conversation, that way the eye contact would be warranted and I'd feel a little less uncomfortable. I worked for a few minutes. I asked if he was from the area. He said no. I asked where he was from. He said California. All short answers, but at least he wasn't giving me the silent treatment. I ran out of things to say and determined that if there was in fact something off about the guy, I should certainly not annoy him into snapping, so I shut up. That's when I turned down his street. It was a dead end, of course. I began to slow down, looking out for the street address, and took one final opportunity to clock him in the mirror, but this time he was looking away. Relieved, I pulled up to the end of the road and put it in park. He didn't budge. He was now staring straight into the back of the seat in front of him. I still couldn't see him too well back there, but it was clear he wasn't moving. This had happened before, a passenger not wanting to get out, a few times, strangely. But both previous times the person seemed lonely or a bit mentally challenged. It was usually innocent, and the previous times it had been during the day. This time wasn't like those at all. The man seemed to be contemplating making a move. I wasn't sure what that might be, but I'd never had such a strange feeling about a person in my life. There was a very ominous sensation of dread hanging in the air, and my survival skills clicked on. Again, I tried to nudge the situation with a polite smile. Have a good night, I said, and when it was apparent he was still not leaving, I continued. Take care, alright? I thought maybe if I gave him some genuine kindness, he'd spare me whatever he was considering doing. He stayed still a few more moments before finally opening the car door and stepping out at a glacial pace. Ironically, now he didn't look at me once as he slowly shut the door. That was fine with me. The moment the door closed, I hit the locks and flipped around, speeding off down the road. To this day, I'm not sure what he was thinking about back there or what he had planned before I gently urged him out. On paper, it's not much of a story, but it was easily one of the creepiest moments of my life. Odds are we all come in contact with a killer at least once in our lives. I think that was mine.